from WDWNT, the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news. This is Park Center. Hello there, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of Park Center. Joining me on tonight's show, we have Allison. Hi, everyone. Jill. Oh, Jill. Hi, sorry, still muted. Hi. No, it happens. Uh, Rob? Greetings from the Tar Heel State. <laughs> <laughs> and Pete. That's amazing. See you Good to see you guys. I love you all. Let's do it. Beautiful <laughs> opening. I love that. All right, kicking Greetings off tonight's show. <laughs> Kicking off tonight's show, we actually have some breaking news that uh, came out very, very recently. Uh, Takumi Te is the name of the new signature restaurant set to open this summer at Epcot's Japan Pavilion. And we've got a, a little bit of concept art for this place as well. Uh, Takumi Te uh, means House of the Artisan when translated. Uh, the design celebrates the relationship between Japanese craftsmen and the, national, uh, the natural world. While the food is inspired by the uh, the collaboration between nature and the artisan. So expect fancy food in a very fancy setting, as you would expect for a signature dining establishment. Uh, but this this looks really cool. I, I want to go back to that concept art really quickly, just because that, that waterfall table view looks amazing. No, good chasing waterfalls, Ben. Oh, goodness. Get out of here, too. I feel like I'm, I'm in a really well-drawn anime. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a really good point. Exactly. Like, if that's what I got out of this restaurant, I would be so happy if this restaurant was like eating inside an anime cartoon. But you know, I'll take really nope. good food. I don't know. Isn't the food yeah, usually garbage in an anime? I mean, yeah. Not uh, not unless it's a cooking anime. They're, they make okay. those. Why are we talking <laughs> okay. about sure. anime when we're talking about a restaurant? It's about the food and the service. Food and service. That's how you make an amazing restaurant. Yeah, atmosphere, of course. That goes no, along with service. No, but not in service Disney. In, in Disney, service so is not of, Service is me, first. Service first. It's service, but this, it's also know, about theme. Bad. Like, you take a place like 50s Primetime or... Um, or Skipper Canteen, and you hold that up against any other restaurant anywhere else, and it doesn't compare because it's got that Disney, not just the Disney service, but it's got the theme. So I'm really hoping that there's a thematic feel to this. Like, obviously, they're making it look very traditional Japan, but I, I want to see how they carry that through outside of just what that... Uh, concept art looks like. Hey, Pete, here's another reason we're not talking about the food or the service. We haven't tried the food or seen the service, but we have seen <laughs> the artwork. So, you know, just based on the artwork, looks pretty cool. But you know what? They've got Japanese, the Japan exhibit um, or the pavilion restaurants are awesome. So uh, the idea that they needed a fourth one, like I wouldn't have said, hey, there's a pavilion that needs a, a, a new restaurant because they already have the yeah. walk up. They have the, the Tokyo Dining, the Teppanito, uh, but this is actually, you know, really exciting that a place that already does really well with table service food is going to have something that's even better uh, is kind of mind-blowing. I can't wait to, to go try out the food and the service once it opens. And I don't right, think that Tokyo right. Dining and Teppanito are what they used to be, and so mm -hmm. I feel like this is going to be like what Tokyo mm -hmm. Dining and Teppanito were 10, 15 years ago, but elevating that um, for for a modern audience. Um, and I'm super excited about this because it's, it's my favorite gift shop for sure. Uh, and <laughs> one of my favorite pavilions in, in, in Epcot. Yeah. The only thing, like, I'm super excited about the concept art. The only thing is that I'm skeptical about is it, it looks like you're gonna have almost like a private room with the screens, or at least there'll be a few <laughs> tables that are like that. But I don't know how the capacity will work. And this is just, I think, I just predict this is going to be a very, very difficult table yeah. to get. Well, that, that table in the concept art is actually the chef's table, to be fair. So that they will not all be like that, presumably. But unfortunately, we don't have any other concept art to go off of at this point. So we don't know what the rest of the restaurant will look like. So. Okay, yeah. so this is no, why I, I was I, saying I, what I was saying is, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll let you talk about it. I, I was just going to say uh, my concern with Allison's statement is just the fact that the same 
people are running this as who run Tokyo Dining and Teppanetto. So I <laughs> don't know how much they're going to elevate it if they're the ones who let Teppanetto and Tokyo Dining kind of decline a little bit. I know I we're in point. overtime, so I'll say this in 30 seconds. But basically, the reason I was saying food and services, all concept art looks amazing when you see it at Walt Disney World. Concept art always looks great. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but there's budget cuts, things happen. That is why it comes down to food and service. And I think, honestly, between Teppanito and um, Tokyo Dining, yes, it's it's they've dropped the ball a little bit, but it's still a great atmosphere. Um, we have these kind of restaurants by me, and yes, they're better here when you go to a nice hibachi place. But it's a fun atmosphere for people who do not have that um, where they're from, around the world or around our country. So... And also, the food there is always great. It's not the food is always bad, and the service is always amazing. The atmosphere could be better. Um, it could be elevated. I'm excited for a new restaurant here, so we'll see when it happens. But this is going to be a great addition. Speaking of things that are elevated that could have better atmosphere. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the Skyliner cars. Uh, we, we actually got to take a look at some of these cars, uh, specifically some of the character cars. Uh, they are now on the wire and unwrapped, so you get to take a look at some of the designs here. Uh, you can see Donald, Scrooge McDuck, uh, Huey, Dewey, Louie on one of them. Uh, there's a Stitch car, because of course there's a Stitch car, and he is on all of the windows at the same time. Uh, <laughs> but he's not at Magic Kingdom. <laughs> not anymore! <laughs> We've got Peter Pan themed car. We've got Finding so Nemo. I, I have a random question, or the question that I have when I see this is, why now did they uncover them? They've been doing such a good job keeping them covered. I know the one car uh, had the cover come off of it, but I thought it was kind of a neat thing that they were still covered waiting for the reveal. I mean, the stations don't look like they're going to be ready to go anytime too soon. Do um, you guys think they played their card this card a little bit early on covering them? I have well, two guesses, so and I have no, today actually, no actual answers. Today, actually, ahead, they, um, we caught video of them testing, or we caught pictures of them testing the Skyliners with those vents open. Um, mm -hmm. So I up. have a feeling that they took the covers off because they needed to open those vents up, because there's no way to do that with the covers still on. That was Can mine. we talk what about the art a that... little bit? Go ahead, Pete. Yeah. No, I was, I, I'll let you talk about the art. I was just going to say in terms of wrapping them up and just coming from a um, testing and construction manager side of things um, yeah. is one, yes, you want to get internal temps on these things. Um, so you can't do that with them being wrapped. You want to see how much they actually reflect the sun, what the temperature is like, what the wind is like, how windy it is inside of there, the actual internal temp. And also they have to start testing them with either water barrels or actual human beings pretty soon. So to do that, they have to be unwrapped. And it was very convenient that there was a massive storm in Walt Disney where the covers got blown off. So why not do it now anyway? You kind of revealed <laughs> it. You have to start testing anyway. You, it's, it just made perfect sense. They're going to reveal it anyway. People have been documenting these gondolas for the last few months anyway. You have to go inside and out of them. You need to put testing devices, water barrels, and humans inside right away. So why not reveal them? It also kicks up a little bit of um, excitement around the system, um, which Disney could use right now. People, they yeah. need more people to book vacations because everyone was holding off for Star Wars Land for December and next year. Now let's get some excitement around Disney. Let's pump something into the media. And that's what they got. They got a huge reaction over the last seven days. So I've got so much nostalgia feeling when I'm looking at the artwork, and it's not because it's all this stuff from my childhood, except like the Scrooge McDuck one kind of, kind of is. Um, but it's like the brightness of the colors, and it just reminds me of Disney in the in the '90s, and makes me excited. And I'm not someone who's like particularly excited about uh, the Skyway or a new form of transportation because I mostly use my car anyway when I'm there. But um, I just like the aesthetic of it. It's fun. And I think that uh, kids are going to love it and be really excited to get into the cars. Um, and it, it, just seeing it, it makes it a little bit more real. Agreed. Like this, this is this is just really fun to look at. And I'm really glad that we're, we're getting a, an early peek at this. Uh, speaking of things that we will not be getting an early peek at, though, I, I suppose, uh, the Rafiki's Planet Watch area of Animal Kingdom is going to be reopening like we previously stated, but it's going to be a little bit later 
and we're going to be getting a new exhibit. So it is, the delay, the opening has been delayed until August at this point. Uh, and we do know that in place of Song of the Rainforest, which was like a sound booth uh, that gave you rainforest sounds and a guided tour of the rainforest by Grandmother Willow from Pocahontas, uh, same kind of style of, of thing as the, uh, the the booths at the exit to sound, sounds dangerous if you ever went in there. Um, this is going to be replaced by a showcase of Disney animators animating animals and the, the research that they put into animating those animals in a realistic way. Um, sad to see this go. I I think this might actually be pretty neat to, to go see. And I, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of interested to, to go to Planet Watch where I hadn't been previously and take a look at this. Yeah, I forgot that was one of the things that you said you had never done. Uh, yeah. I used to, I mean, I really liked what it was. It was a good kind of escape um, from the rest of the park to be able to take that train ride out, walk around out there, uh, you know, when my kids were smaller, pet the animals, go into the exhibit. Um, I really liked the... Uh, the sound booths. I thought those were a lot of fun. So it's kind of sad to me to see them just rip them out and not replace that show. It seems like it would be easier to replace that show with something. And there's a lot of space in there that I feel like this exhibit they're talking about, and obviously I haven't seen it. I don't know how much space it's going to take up, but I feel like there was probably enough space to do this elsewhere in that area without ripping these sound booths out. So, you know, for that part, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Um, one thing that, that I had, thought about all along with this was that I really hoped that when we learned they were reopening this, that they were really going to plus it out, um, you know, make there a lot more to do. Um, I think exhibits are, are good, but I was hoping there would be something bigger. Um, uh, I know Kim Irvine talked, the Imagineer talked about when they shut down an attraction for a, a long time, that they like to bring it back with something you know, a, a big plus. And, um, you know, this sounds neat, but I, I was hoping for something bigger uh, coming out of it. Plus, construction wise, didn't they shut this thing down like last August? Why is it taking so long to knock these booths out of, out of the uh, out of the walls? Yeah, really? Yeah, it's been like the better part of a year and they've only torn down one of these booths and there are eight of them total. I don't know. It just seems like it seems so weird to me. Like, they shut it down, I guess, because nobody was going. I mean, that's my impression anyway. I haven't been to, I hadn't been to Planet Watch in, like, 10 years. Um, and I kind of got the vibe that that was how other people were about it, too. Um, now, granted, I'm sure there were plenty of people that, like, the goats and the, the rainforest boost and whatever. But it's just, it's odd because it doesn't seem like there's a lot of progress happening. Um there's mixed messages of what's happening with it from cast members when you talk to them. I, and there doesn't seem to be any real momentum on this. So I'm yeah. just, it just all feels weird. Like why, why are they even, why did they even shut it down? Like I understand closing Disney it seasonally or whatever. are a bunch of geniuses. If you want to build attendance in anything, say you're going to shut it down. The whole <laughs> world will show up. Just shit. I, I, you shut down uh, Planet Watch. All of a sudden, the whole world is like, "We love Planet Watch. You cannot shut down Planet Watch. The trains will have lines for hours." That's their geniuses. They're geniuses. Oh, Let's be honest. Let's go look at Planet Watch one more time before it's Utopia Land. Let's go pet some goats. Let's have a good time. You really yeah, think they thought they were ahead? That's what I'm really holding out for. One hundred percent Utopia Land. If it's not. This might be the greatest blunder in Walt Disney World history. It's set up for Zootopia. It's a train to a land mm -hmm. for animals. Yep. It is the premise for Zootopia. Mm -hmm. The people who wrote it went to went to Rafiki's Planet Watch, and they were like, we should do a movie. Let's do it. Uh, what's that, Bunny? <laughs> right, well, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, what's that, a sarcastic fox? We'll do that, too. I like it. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's where they got the movie from. So That's the whole film, right there. That's fair. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see if they end up making a film about Food and Wine Festival. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the star. Yeah, the, the transitions are getting harder here, folks. Uh, so yeah. the lineup has been announced for the Eat to the Beat concert series for this year. Uh, so that's what goes on during Food and Wine Fest, the uh, the concert that they have back there. They've got a bunch of artists here. Uh, definitely a block that you can tell uh, is artists that were going to be at Night of Joy if it still was around, and it <laughs> isn't. Um, hello, Mercy Me, how are you? Uh, 
But we, we've got some some other uh, great acts in here as well. I was surprised by Postmodern Jukebox on this list. I think that's pretty sweet. Um, what What's everybody I'm, else's like favorites or surprises from this lineup? How'd they land De Capella? How'd they get them involved? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, so that's hard to get. Yeah. You know what? Just real quick for me, like I'm looking at the list, and, and it, it may be to your point about the Night of Joy, but like Lauren Daigle, like Jimmy Allen, both of them are, you know, up and comers. I, it's surprising for me to see them there uh, when you've got bands like, you know, the Baja Men and. Um, uh, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, which is the kind of thing yeah. I'm used to seeing at these shows. So it's kind of neat to see some up and comers happening. But to your point, I mean, were they kind of some of the bands that were planned to be for Night of Joy? I wouldn't think Jimmy Allen, but maybe. Yeah. <laughs> country, but I mean, there, there's there's definitely some overlap, and there's there's a lot of not as well. I mean, plain white tea is not exactly what you'd expect at night of joy, but it, it's what, pretty clear to me you? that they're, everybody who still wanted to play at Disney, but couldn't is showing up for this. What's Hanson Pete's beef down there? Lauren Pete's, giving, Pete's giving these. What's up? I'm giving, who do you think you I'm are? always you Mr. Disney. I'm always Mr. Disney, but I'm just saying it's just the same your side old behind you. stuff. It's, yeah. I am, I love Disney and I'm, I always get their backs, but I mean, it's the same 70% of last year um, and then yeah. they mix in 30% new and it's, and like you said, there's up and newcomers. I don't think they're spending the money as someone who's like kind of knows what bands make to go do this is that they're saving their money on certain acts and granted certain acts cost more. Don't get me wrong. Boys to Men sold out Radio City Music Hall. I was there in New York and they crushed it. The fact that they're there, I, you'll see me there every single night. 100% <laughs> voice to men, eat to the beat. But then you have these other acts where like people don't even know who they are or like a very small segregated market know who they are. And mm -hmm. I don't like that. I prefer them be at other festivals like, mm. and no offense to other festivals, but like maybe Flower and Garden or maybe um, whatever, you know, a holiday festival or whatever. But eat, eat to the beat are supposed to be bigger bands, well-known, sold out every night, food and wine festival. This is, this is your premier festival. This is what put... Epcot on the map. So signing up these up and comers or these bands that you've had for like eight years in a row, like who cares about the Baja men? Nobody does. It was all <laughs> awesome when I was no. in the eighth grade. Like, and honestly, that was the last time they were relevant. They haven't had a song since. They yeah. have one hit. Mix it up, bring in something exciting and new, spend a little bit more money. This is what put you on the map. Keep yourself relevant. Honestly, I was looking at the list from the SeaWorld Festival, I forgot what it's called. They had better acts. And it looks amazing. I would rather be at the Sea World Food Festival than this Eat to the Beat concert series. And it's a little upsetting because, you know, Epcot is my home turf. So come on, Disney, step it up. But keep boys to men forever. They are the greatest. Thank you. I have a strong <laughs> counter argument to that that I'm going to give you in the post show. So stay tuned for that one. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't but wait. Mo moving on from there. Uh, to how Disneyland is going to be dealing with the crowds at Galaxy's Edge because this is this is going to be a bit of an issue. It sounds like uh, so Disney will be enforcing four-hour Star Wars Galaxy's Edge reservations with wristbands and stormtrooper patrols. That's right, there will be stormtroopers in the park that will kick you out if you're there over time. And this is just asking for people to stay over time so they get kicked <laughs> out by stormtroopers. I don't care. That's what this is going to do. And that's fine. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I think, like, if, first of all, I always get upset with Disney for, like, not caring enough about continuity of story and show, um, especially in crowd control and stuff like this. And, and they come up with this. This is genius. I'm sad I didn't come up with it on my own before, but this is fantastic. And if people decide that they're going to overstay so that the stormtroopers escort them out, um, that's another story that they're going to tell their family and friends when they go home, and it becomes <laughs> advertising for Disney for Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, I just worry about the people that think the store troopers kicking them out is like a joke. I mean, when we were at um, Launch Bay uh, for Studios After Hours on the anniversary, they had all the um, Launch Bay meet and greets open, and there were stormtroopers just kind of wandering around because there weren't a lot of people. 
And uh, they were like coming up and messing with people. Like they made me throw my drink away. They because the drinks were free, so they didn't care. Um, <laughs> they were totally messing with this other lady. It was hilarious. But like, so what if people think they're joking and they're like, "No, wait, I'm not leaving." Like I have, I I can also see this kind of. Yes, I think 95% of people are going to think it's fun or whatever, but there's 5% of people that are either A, not going to get it, or B, mm -hmm. are going to get angry and cause a scene. And I think there's going to be, like, I, there's definitely going to be at least one or two incidents that we hear about of this going horribly awry. You know, sure, to piggyback on that, though, it, like, you, I'm sorry, you were talking about that, uh, Allison, and I was thinking about that whole thing where, like, when Woody and, and Buzz would drop to the ground when someone would say, Andy's coming, and oh, then yeah. every five seconds somebody would yell, Andy's coming, Andy's coming, and they just kind of got to a point where they were like, okay, obviously people can't handle this, we're going to have to stop. Um, I wonder if they'll get to the point where, like you said, if people want to be thrown out by stormtroopers, if it just gets to a point where they're like, okay, all right, it was a good idea for a little while, but now we can't do this anymore because everybody wants to be dragged up by a stormtrooper or getting selfies. <laughs> I was well, I thinking think the, the same good thing exact about this, thing. Go ahead, Allison. The good, the good thing about this is if uh, somebody is staying in the land past when they, they're supposed to and everyone's really trying to take advantage of this, then everyone's going to be clued in to, like, this is actually real when the storm trooper escorts them out. It's not going to be something that the people who've been there for four hours, like, oh, I haven't seen this happen before. What does this mean? They'll have seen <laughs> it happen with 47 other families, so they'll know it's time to go. Sorry, Fair. go ahead, Pete. It would be... No, I was going to say, just, I, I totally agree that uh, they're setting themselves up for everyone wanting to be escorted out by stormtroopers. I just wish there was an actual consequence. Kind of like if you crash, like they say, if you crash uh, in the ride, like everyone will be mean oh, to you. Yeah. Like, it'd be great if like if you overstay your time, you can't come back for 30 days. Get out and stay out. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, you're banned. Get out and stay out. By the way, going back to Eat to the Beat, who's this band TBD? They're on five weekends. I don't even know who they are. It's on, it's out of control. <laughs> so moving on to the food in Star Wars. <laughs> so we, we actually have gotten uh, full menus for Star Wars Land at this point. Uh, or Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I really should start calling it that. Uh, <laughs> it's just so hard to break the habit. Everyone's going to call it Star Wars Land, dude. Everyone's going to call yeah. it Star Wars Land. Like so, they will call it Avatar Land. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so we've we've got the uh, the menu for the food and cargo bay that is docking bay seven. Seven. Yeah, seven. seven. Uh, which seems to be the the main like substantial food in the area, uh, like with, with stuff like uh, smoked ribs, a noodle salad, uh, some garden spread, which is like a, a, a herb hummus. Uh, we've got a, a roast and a garden, a, a meatlo meatless meatloaf that I am honestly very excited to try. Uh, there's desserts, there's kids' meals as well. We've got drinks, both alcoholic, non-alcoholic available. Uh, this this seems pretty good. I'm kind of excited for uh, for trying some of this food out at some point, especially, like I said, that meatless meatloaf. Uh, what, what else are people looking forward to trying from him, all this stuff? Well, obviously the chickenless chicken, the muscleless mussels, um, um, all sound amazing. See, see, the muscleless no, muscles was my nickname in uh, high school. Kidding. You're looking forward to trying the drinks. We all know. <laughs> that, that's what fair. What percent is the cocktails, baby? Who eats at Walt Disney World when there's things to drink? But wait, seriously, Save though, your money. this cocktail Come menu on. looks awesome. I'm super excited for this cocktail menu. I think there's some stuff on there that looks amazing. I'm so excited. Although, here's what I will say about this entire menu. I'm sorry, some of the names are ridiculous. Like, I love things like Fuzzy Tauntaun. That's funny. But, like, <laughs> what is a spirit cat? Like, what does that even mean? Like, it's a little too much of this is a little too, like, far afield for the casual Star Wars fan, even, much less, like, the people who aren't really that into it one way or another. But whatever. I can get over the names. But, like, some look at these drinks. They look amazing. The, the, Coffee so with marmalade and rum. Yeah. So this is what scares want, me about this I want all of is that they do look amazing. Is that there's going to be one of two things? Is that one they're going to take too long to make, or two they're going to be pre-made. Mm. And I don't like pre-made mm. cocktails. And two, I hate when people mm. have to wait at because I and no one likes waiting. You wait long enough at Walt Disney World for rides and shows and everything else. So I don't want have to, I don't want consumers to have to wait for these drinks, and I also don't want them pre-made. So 
I hope that there's a happy medium because they do sound amazing. They sound fantastic. I love how they like you know reinvented themselves in this land. Um, I, those are just my big two concerns from a bar yeah. perspective. Do keep no, in mind I, I that they're you. limiting the number of people that are going to be in the uh, the cantina at any one time. So hopefully that'll cut down on wait times at least some. So, I get so two, you still have to wait to get into the bar, then you have to wait for a drink. Great. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Peter. Uh, so I've got two quick things. One is that um, uh, I, I picked this up, this comic book, uh, the uh, Galaxy's Edge comic book oh, that yeah. came out. And there's a part in here where the guy says, hey, you there, can I interest you in a Ronto rap best in the quadrant? It's like the first thing somebody in the chat pointed out. I may have been Jose. I don't remember. But like was like, okay, they're already marketing. Like line one in this comic book, like tying it into the land, which is kind of awesome uh, when it comes to the food. But you know what? The, when I first looked at the Pandora menu, I was not impressed. And then now Satuli Canteen is my favorite restaurant to eat in. So I'm very excited to see yeah. how they take what they did there and take that to the next level. I know it has some stupid names but i'm really excited to see them in person and, and get a chance to try them because those the dishes look great at satuli and then when you got there you weren't really sure like with all the ingredients what would be best but i, I yeah. love that restaurant now and like every time we go back we go there so i'm hoping this is the same yeah. thing uh, i that's exactly what i thought too is this feels like it's the next uh, uh evolution of what they do at satuli canteen yes, yeah. please disney don't dumb it down it looks really good it yep. does <laughs> Please don't. Yeah, don't take away our Monte Cristo of drinks. Don't do oh, it. Oh, gosh. Dumb down the name, but not the money. Yeah, Too soon, the man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Too soon? Sorry. Rest in peace. <laughs> All right. And our final yeah, topic in. for the night, uh, the, the space restaurant in Epcot that still does not have a name is going to be <laughs> opening this year. Space <laughs> restaurant's not good enough for you? I'm saying that I don't know what to call it yet. <laughs> We've got the well, same one already... piece of concept art, and we've got no name. And what is what is going on with this place? Like, there's going to be a thousand bo bottles of the world's finest wines and a wide selection of craft beer, but we don't have a name. Like, what? It's a surprise. <laughs> you don't always have to you take never... the wrap off the gondola. Sometimes it can be a surprise. They're gonna yeah, they're gonna have a big announcement at some point where they're gonna say what the what the name of it is. But I think that very much like we talked about with Galaxy's Edge and Star Wars Land, I bet a lot of people are just gonna still call it the Space Restaurant even after they give a name for it. Um, yeah. I'm excited to go there. I think a lot of people are. I think that it's gonna be and maybe we talked about it before, like when you go into uh, be our guest, it's really cool to look around inside and I think a lot of people will want to see the inside. And for that, I'm I'm afraid it's going to be a hard table to get, kind of like Allison was talking about with the the new Japanese sit down. Well, what's cool is that the the whole appeal of this place is that to get in, and same thing that you said, to get a table would be cool, but you can't even get in and see it unless you have a table because yep. you need a reservation. Then you go through this portal which transports you to outer space where you get your table. So yeah, it's going to be a high demand, awesome restaurant. I love this kind of stuff. I like the exclusivity. I like that you have to make reservations. Um, I like that it's cool. There'll be an atmosphere. I like they're hiring international people and also, you know, your typical, um, you know, domestic staff um, to mix in like the International Space Station. I'm pumped about this. And also, you mean Pete, you uh, like that it's themed. <laughs> I, I love theming. I love theming. And I believe it's the. I think I'm gonna get the restaurant name wrong, but the Patina Restaurant Group is it Patina. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, Patina. Yeah, they run the like the best restaurants at Walt well, Disney World. I mean, well, at least my favorites. So this is you got good food, good service, great theming. I'll see you at the space restaurant. You know, if you want a reservation, let me know. You can jump in at mine. Let's have some fun. I, I would like to add just briefly that uh, looking through this article a little bit, uh, there is a either a name or a code name for the restaurant at this point, which is Space Two Twenty. Uh, so we, we don't know if that is official, uh, like what the actual name is going to, well, it's not official, but we don't know if that's going to be what the restaurant's name is on like the park map, or if that's just an internal code name so that they don't have to keep calling it that space restaurant in Disney world. Uh, so it's the worst name, by the way, did anyone notice that there, we already have an outer rim bar at the contemporary and one of the drinks in oh, Star yeah. Wars land was outer rim. So like, that's a little confusing yeah. as well. You're naming a drink after a lounge you already have on property. So, I'm actually surprised know. they didn't rename Outer Rim at the Contemporary when they decided to do Star Wars Land. That actually surprises <laughs> me a little bit, too. That's that's a good point. Yeah, what's going on? Who uh, who cares what the name is? This is going to be a fun spot. Oh, it's going to be I think fun, you should yeah. have to ride. 
You should have to ride Mission Space in tents just to get a reservation yeah. first. That should be a real thing. I mean, in my opinion. You earn it. Or as after long you as eat. It's before the people food eat. Yeah. Yeah. It would be <laughs> nice if there was a quick exit. Don't do try that the to the cat You eat, and then you go on in tents, you try the food twice. What a, what a, it's amazing. <laughs> no. <sighs> We're and not on that terrible you. note... <laughs> Gonna bring what tonight's show to a close. Oh, Great, Pete, you made Dad mad. Now he's shutting down the show. <laughs> oh, I will turn this I'm show gonna, around, Mister. I'm gonna turn this show right around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Thank you all for joining oh, yeah. us. Thanks, really do appreciate you folks uh, joining us. Uh, f let me uh, just quickly before we go uh, say a quick word about our our new sponsor. Uh, a big Woo. thanks to Never Grow Up Vacations, the official travel partner of WDWNT. Never Grow Up Vacations is an authorized Disney vacation planner whose focus is in making magic for their clients. With over 20 years of experience booking Disney vacations, we're sure they can help you make your next trip even more magical. Head on over to WDWNT.travel to contact them about your next trip today. They're also, in, in the realm of other things to plug... Uh, please do uh, check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash WDWNT uh, for the video version of the show. We do also have an audio-only version of the show available. Search for Park Center wherever fine podcasts are sold, and you should be able to find us relatively quickly. Coming up tomorrow night, we've got WDW News Tonight, uh, our, our two-hour fun news parody games everything show extravaganza i guess is the best word for it uh, if you've never seen it highly recommend you check that out uh, again that's tomorrow night 9 p.m uh, we stream every wednesday night at 9 p.m so come check us out live at wdwntunes.com if you're not watching live already for those of you who are watching live and are our wigs members uh stay tuned we do have a post show coming tonight if you're not a Wigs member, that's what we uh, call our patrons. Head over to patreon.com slash WDWNT. And on there for as little as $2 a month, you can help support the show and get access to the post show for this show, the post show for news tonight, the entire podcast backlog is available on there, and a whole bunch of other benefits. So I highly recommend you check that out over at patreon.com slash WDWNT. All right, that's going to do it for tonight's show, folks. Stay tuned for the post show if you're watching live. Otherwise, we will see you next week. Bye. Hey, yo, it's the post.